So welcome back. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, this whole JDBC project uh, was initiated by a real life project. Um, and I used the MySQL database and the test uh, circular database uh, for uh, testing and development reasons. Uh, and now I uh, switched to the real production test environment um, where uh, there is a Microsoft uh, SQL Server, not a MySQL. And as I started working with it, uh, there were some changes. Uh, of course, I don't want to uh, share um, project-related information, so I just show you the results. The first result is that for some reason, uh, Microsoft decided to uh, use lowercase uh, data types so instead of bit, for example, that uh, was uh, defined by the MySQL server, and I have already configured that it will uh, be a Boolean, uh, I mean on my side, the dust uh, side, uh, there is another uh, bit uh, came from the Microsoft SQL server, and I have to configure all the uh, these items uh, similarly to, to the MySQL because it, it is a different uh, casing. Um, um, this is something that I will show you in a minute uh, because I would like to refactor my things uh, because right now um, <coughs> as you see the, the Succula uh, database is uh, stored in the Succula DB in this unit. I see the unit entities, there are lots of uh, entities over here. Um, But there is another um, there's another unit in the background, which is JDBC Meta. The JDBC Meta unit contains uh, the entities that I have created for uh, this JDBC project. Um, here you see the JDBC column, JDBC connector, data type, JDBC connector service, these kind of things. It is stored in a meta layer. So uh, what I would like to do is to keep these other um, generic uh, configurations in, in the common uh, JDBC meta unit, so I will not um, have to uh, configure it every time I connect to a database. So what I want to do is to open up the JDBC definitions, like I open up the bit and I say that I want to store it not in the uh, JDBC, uh, sorry, not in the Sakeda DB, but in the JDBC meta. So as you see, I have moved from this unit. Now I have this JDBC data type here, disconnected here, and in the Sakeda DB, I don't see the bit anymore. So yeah, I do this with all the entities. I think I will just uh, speed up or maybe just pause the uh, while I do all the moves so after a few minutes I'm done with the refactor <laughs> I should get some uh, support for these bulk operations but what happened now is that I have removed all the type definitions from this Sakura DB unit and moved it to to the JDBC meta unit. And in this unit, I have also collected all the data types, JDBC data types uh, provided by the MySQL server. Uh, sorry, uh, the the Microsoft uh, SQL Server. Um, this 
is I think it's it's an important thing to see that um, right now in my um, original JDBC connector I still have all the JDBC data types these are of course uh, the same entities but these entities are not stored anymore in the Sakura DTP uh, uh, in the Sakura DB unit but instead they are uh, stored in the JDBC meta unit and the unit references are uh, managed automatically uh, by the loader so what I have to do now is to configure all the SQL uh, Microsoft SQL Server uh, data types properly so I just show that and let's see um, bit date time whatever hmm. well <laughs> okay start with the uh, maybe the integers like the small int Uh, I connected the small int to the other flong because uh, I have a very limited uh, type support uh, in dust and I think it's not right now it's it's okay later on maybe I will just change it somehow so in the data type int oops okay int identity <laughs> uh, I guess that is That, that should be a long timestamp is not var binary decimal that's surely a long or maybe not uh, change it to double <sighs> I don't know it's not easy data type int that's for sure it will be a long are you date time uh, you should be a raw okay just run over it again the text is not of course unique identifier <sighs> I don't know small int that's fine I can set Are you and worker? No, and who are you? Bit? No, okay. So that was it. See again the JDBC data types. The original bit is connected to bool and this small caps bit should also be connected to bool fine and I think it was it was the only bool let's see you say date time date time was connected to raw So date time will be connected to timestamp. Var binary. I guess it's raw. Decimal. Keep it. And var car. Keep it unique identifier I don't know maybe string text will also be string and date time 2 will be raw I don't handle date times good and see how I okay raw is done I worked with decimal it was double good so let's see the decimal should be double
home. Nice. And for car unique identifiers things, this will be. Uh, yeah, it will be identifier. Just like car here. Yeah, this was identifier. And I just connect it to text. Nice. Unique identifier. And end of our car. Nice. All right. Let's see if I can commit my changes. Is there any problem with the commit? It looks that it runs fine. And whenever I do something, I see. Uh, the response very nice so now I also a quick pause I will do because um, now I will check my work if I can um, actually run a select on my work database okay so the text was uh, test was successful um, I was able to correctly import uh, data from my um, production environment uh, from the Microsoft SQL Server. So now let's uh, take a look at uh, the other changes that I had to make uh, in order to connect and use a Microsoft SQL Server through the JDBC connection instead of the MySQL Server. So the first difference was that I have a different uh, database attribute type uh, constants, uh, type name constants, because uh, uh, the Microsoft server returns uh, small case names like a bit, uh, while the uh, Microsoft, uh, the MySQL server returns uh, upcase names like upcase bit. Uh, I had to uh, refactor these uh, conversion constants out uh, from the actual uh, database unit, like SuckerDB, uh, to the common JDBC meta. And I did the same thing uh, with the Microsoft ver uh, Microsoft uh, uh, JDBC data types. So now I have a more uh, flexible and reusable environment. But there were other changes. <coughs> uh, one is um, I always uh, do a double check uh, uh, before committing my changes. So it's easy to overview these uh, modifications here. Let's see, one was, yeah, this data type name thing. I can just uh, remove these changes because uh, from now on, the properly configured uh, value converter will run just fine. Yeah, uh, the first thing was that uh, the Microsoft server returned forward only result sets. And the forward order result sets are <laughs> very tricky because they uh, don't respond to uh, direct cursor movement commands like the first command that I used every time when I iterated over <coughs> the result set. Uh, what I had to do is to create uh, JDBC utils opt first. So I just uh, switched to the JB JDBC utils now. Uh, this is a new function, the opt first. Uh, it works like that. If uh, the result set is not forward only, then it can call the first. Otherwise, uh, it, it should check if it is before first. And if, it, if yes, then it can call the, uh, the next function, which just moves uh, the cursor in the result set to the first record. Otherwise, it returns false. But now, I think I should change this because I just realized that this was a bad idea. Uh, yeah. Because I want to throw an exception 
because otherwise I just uh, have already iterated over the result set uh, right now it just returns false but I should rather throw an exception and I think I should just delete this line um, very nice much nicer and the other thing so this is the ops first function and I am now in, right now in the just test GDBC utils uh, and I did another thing I had this dump result set uh, function which uh, is, is for for uh, debugging and checking purposes and uh, in my JDBC connector many times uh, I actually called uh, the dump result set uh, before processing it uh, but for a for the only result set I can iterate over the result set only once so um, this dump uh, iterated over the result set so the, the actual operation could not execute so uh, I want to avoid dumping the result set if it's forward only um, but this thing is in the bad place because I would like to dump the header and I only uh, skip the dumping after uh, printing out the header of the result set at least I should know this so yeah that's fine now okay so these were the changes uh, in the does JDBC tails um, skip the dumping and this opt first function so I can return to the just JDBC connector and see those changes so I use this opt first function anytime I used first before and there is another trick here that um, every driver requires a slightly different syntax uh, for the database URL which is a bit funny and I started to build uh, the URL uh, so uh, to at least avoid repeating the database name so yeah that's a quick hack um, because the original version used the the way how the MySQL database wanted uh, this URL but the of course the Microsoft SQL Server requires a different format in the URL so I don't uh, build it the change is that uh, I check if the database name is at the end of the URL and if not then I use the original build uh, routine so yeah I <coughs> In the in the work environment, I just created the, the whole uh, database URL, and it ends with the database name. So uh, this part, this build part, doesn't run uh, in the production version. So another opt first, and yes, yet another funny difference between the Microsoft uh, JDBC uh, driver and the MySQL. Uh, in the MySQL environment, I had I, I executed this uh, select star, select all from table, like mm, I don't know uh, actors, 
uh, and it was fine because um, in the result set metadata I always got <coughs> the table name back uh, from from the column so I, I could just use the first column table name and get the table info uh, I had to realize that in the uh, Microsoft Word the table name is not returned in the result set metadata I checked the internet and realized that uh, I think there are some text columns where they return it but otherwise they don't so I cannot rely on it um, actually I did a quick hack <laughs> this time I just say that I try to find out all the column check all the columns if any of them uh, has a table name in it and if not then I just append uh, the end of the query which is a select star from whatever so the table name is at the end uh, of the query of course it's a bad idea so right now I can't use a where condition and these kind of things uh, here so it, it would fail in that case but uh, this is just a, a prototype and later on of course I will have uh, special functions for loading data uh, content of an entity and I will know the table name from some different a different source I don't have to parse the uh, the select uh, for the table name so later on it will be fine uh, I can I can mm, create better uh, functions but for the prototyping and for testing reasons uh, this solution is fine this is how it works right now and that's another opt first and it's all over uh, what else had changed? Of course, I have all the JSON files here, uh, which changed uh, right now. The configuration has changed. And yeah, of course, uh, I added the uh, Microsoft uh, JDBC driver um, to the external libraries. And I also added it to the, uh, to the class path. So right now I can this is how I can use the, uh, the Microsoft SQL Server. So now I will uh, set up the commit, do some uh, further tests uh, with my test environment and, and the uh, Microsoft version. And, well, later on some new features. Thank you.